Oh, hey, buddy. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Pretty good, dude. Oh, good. What you up to? I am seeing something that you are going to want to see. Hmm. We already have people copying us, buddy. Check this Seriously? out. Seriously? Yeah, 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 yeah. Check it. Yeah. Hello. Welcome to Two Russian Fins. Thank you so much first for f contributing to our fundraising drive. We raised 6 billion rubles. This allows us to buy one American light bulb for our light. Also, thank you for subscribing on YouTube. Vanya and I, we really want to thank you. We look at subscribers. We find out President Putin watches show. It is crazy. Also, in completely unrelated news, we no longer offer coverage of Ukrainian League. Instead, we give you funny sketch. You watch now. Not bad, huh? Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. We got. F I mean, we we're, we're this is the big time, man. We're doing well. Listen, I I didn't want to have to show you this. What? I have to read? I don't want to... Okay. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Two Pyongyang Fans. This episode is brought to you by Great Le... Su Supreme, Supreme Leader. For blessings upon all for great footballing. In, in today's news, Great Nation... North Korea defeats Imperial USA 400 to 0. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> and all, all, also wins the World Cup. So that, that's, that's good. Right? We're happy. Yeah. Uh, um, in addition, in the US, USL is announced for Division 2 status. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Two United Fans. I'm Notch. And I'm Kyle. This episode, we've got some great info for you. We've talked to Stuart McTaggart about the Ottawa Fury. We're also going to give you a little bit of background ourselves about that team. We've also got some great interviews with a couple of Minnesota United players and with Manny Lagos about what the off-season and the preseason trips are all about. So mm -hmm. stay right in your seats, don't go anywhere. Next, we've got the Ottawa Fury coming up. Hi, I'm Jamie Watson with Minnesota United, and you're watching Two United Fans. Hey everybody, welcome back to United Fans. Coming up, we have Stuart McTaggart. Oh my god, I love that last name, by the way. McTaggart? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to marry him just so I can take his last name. <laughs> so you can be <laughs> Detective McTaggart on the wrong side of the law. Hand over your badge and gun, McTaggart. You're <laughs> off the force. Well, anyway, McTaggart, Stuart McTaggart is... Fury fanatic on Twitter. He writes and blogs on the Ottawa Fury. Very cool guy joining us to talk about the preseason for Ottawa Fury in just a minute. But let's give you a brief overview of the team because I think some of you might not know that the Ottawa Fury were actually founded in the year 2000, aka right after we didn't all die from the Millennium Bug. But uh, they had it. W League women's team starting in 2000. They were purchased by John Pugh in the year 2002. He was a Ottawa uh, businessman and computers guy. And so since buying the team, he started a developmental academy for men in 2003. He founded the uh, Ottawa Fury SC. P 
PDL squad in 2005. They played right up until 2013 when they were replaced with our good old North American Soccer League's Ottawa Fury! Yay! Yay! yay. <laughs> I like saying yay. So they were founded in 2014, new expansion team for the NASL and uh, the W League team which has kept playing since then was actually disbanded at the end of the 2014 season. So uh, one of the things that's happened to the Fury since uh, the, they joined the NASL is that they've expanded with their fans and their stadium a bit. Yeah, they absolutely have. They're on an amazing trajectory right now. And so we're going to talk to Stuart a little bit about some more of the details behind this. But the two supporters groups that are currently out there and that are organized around the Fury are the Bytown Boys and the uh, Stony Monday Riots. I got that right, right? Yeah, you did. And so we'll learn a little bit more about what they're up to, what the stadium atmosphere is like. And speaking of the stadium, it is the TD Place. So this is a stadium that they share with a CFL team, which is Canadian Football League. Mm -hmm. But by all accounts, it is... Wait, is Canadian football real football? I don't know which football it is. Like that? Hand that. egg, football. Um, uh, anyway, keep Canada, going. everything's hockey. Yeah, it's true. It's probably like, <laughs> fo like, do they have like a hockey rink with like a football and they hit it with like a stick? Football? Yeah, probably. I don't know. Maybe we'll ask him about that. Hey, we'll if see. you're Canadian and you're really pissed off at us now, please keep watching. We love you. <laughs> we promise. These are just jokes, yo. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. It is an awesome stadium, so be happy about that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so the Fury don't actually own the stadium um, themselves. They're part of a group, which is OSEG, which is Ottawa Sports and Entertainment Group, similar mm -hmm. probably to, if you know MLS better, uh, MLSE, Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment out of Toronto. Mm. And so they own it, and they also own the um, Black and Reds, which is... The Red Blacks. Red the Ottawa Black. Red Blacks, which is the, the CFL, CFL team. team. And the Ottawa 67s, yep. who are the hockey squad. Yeah. So it's a collection um, of sporting teams that are underneath kind of this umbrella. Mm -hmm. And as we understand it, talking with Stuart up next, I think he'll explain a little bit more about that. But we think Ottawa's kind of separate, but they get access to this beautiful, beautiful stadium. So without further ado... Let's get to talking to Stuart and let him tell us what this is all about. McTaggart, we want to hear from you about what you've been doing on the wrong side of the law. Da da da. Hey everybody, welcome back to United Fans. With us right now is Stuart McTaggart coming over live from Ottawa. Hey Stuart, welcome to the show. How's it going guys? Good. Thanks yeah. for being on. Yeah, I really appreciate you being here. Can you tell the folks what you do and where online that you do it? So I'm an Ottawa Fury blogger, and you can find my blog at wordpress.com, uh, Fury Fanatic, or you can find me on youtube.com slash Fury Fanatic, or on Twitter at Fury Fanatic. And I also write for Red Nation Online, which is an online Canadian soccer magazine, and you can find them at rednationonline.com. Very cool, very cool. So we just gave everybody a little bit of an overview of the organization of the Fury. A couple of things that we wanted to ask you about, though, was the supporters groups, which uh, I believe there are two, the Bytown Boys and Stony Monday Riot. And we also wanted to ask you about TD Place, the stadium. So if you could tell us a little bit about the groups and what the stadium's like, that'd be great. Absolutely. Uh, the Bytown Boys have been supporting... Uh, soccer in Ottawa since 2011 when we had the PDL team um, and they've been following the Fury right through until they got the NASL club. Stony Monday Riot um, kind of broke off from the Bytown boys and began last year and they are the second supporters group. Uh, they're much looser organized than the Bytown boys who have uh, the Bytown boys have a membership fee and elections and whatnot. The Stony Monday Riot are basically just a loose group of soccer fans who, uh, who just love to make a lot of noise at the soccer game. Um, so they've both been with the club last year, and there's also a, a third group called the Fury Ultras, although they have absolutely no presence other than at the football game for 90 minutes. Uh, no one knows their members' numbers or anything. So the two organized groups are the Bytown Boys and the Stony Monday Riot, and, uh, they're just incredible at making noise. Um, when we were at Carlton Place, they were amazing at stomping on the metal stands and making a ton of noise and now that we've moved to TD Place uh, they've adapted a lot more drums and got a lot more voices into the crowd to make it a lot louder. Cool, what kind of instruments do you guys rock? Uh, we've got a couple big bass drums the guys use and a couple floor toms that they like. Um, 
one of the guys was bringing in a Spanish drum kit the one time, but uh, generally just keeps to the, the low sounding drums for now. Gotcha. So, so what's DD place like as a stadium? Uh, it's incredible. I mean, it's used for the Canadian football league. So it's standards are incredibly high. Um, the locker room is amazing. They have a big fitness gym within the stadium that they use. Uh, it holds up to 24,000 people. Um, it's got the brand new artificial turf in, which is the same that is used in the Champions League by some of the northern clubs. Um, and I mean, it's, I haven't been to all the stadiums in the NASL, but I would say it's probably one of the best out there. What's the capacity of TD Place, and does is the whole thing open for an NASL game? So the capacity is 24,000 full, and that's what they'll get for the, the Canadian Football League games. For the Ottawa Fury, what happens is there's there's three different sections. There's the lower tier of the main stand, which holds about 6,000, and it usually gets somewhat close to selling out, and that's what's open. If they start to sell more than that, they'll open up the, the other side of the stadium, and then if that starts to sell out well, they'll open up the second tier above the main stand. So, for instance... Uh, when we played the New York Cosmos in the season opener or the first game at TD Place, I think the attendance was around 14,000, 15,000, and they had both sides open. But for the majority of games, it's just the, the bottom part of the main stand. And what section do the supporters sit? So they sit in section W. Um, it's kind of the name that they've used to unite the two different groups together as one. Uh, they call it the dub. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's that's their section. That's where they make all their noise. Awesome. Awesome. So let's move on to a quick recap of last season. Before we get on to what, you, what the team's been up to this year, how did 2004 go? First season for the Fury. What did you think? It was good. Um, I mean, we were kind of comparing ourselves with Indy 11 for most of the year because we were both expansion clubs. And, uh, I mean, in the standings, we did quite a bit better than them. Uh, I think... Heading into the fall season, there's pretty high expectations that the club might be able to finish mid-table somewhere, but they had a couple run of poor results and uh, injuries and a couple of positions that didn't work out too well as they had hoped, so they struggled. But, uh, I mean, it's the first year we weren't rock bottom. Um, we got a lot of character built within the squad. We've got a good core of players moving into the second year, and I think there's going to be a lot of improvement upon last year. And uh, on their way into this season, what's the off season been like? It's been busy. Uh, they've had lots of contracts. They've renewed about, I think it's 13 players from last year's squad. So they've got that core set of players uh, that include Richie Ryan, the captain, Nikki Patterson, who's the first player to sign with the Fury as an NASL squad, uh, Tommy Heineman, who's the American forward. So they've got a good core set of players, and then they built around that, uh, mainly in the defense by bringing in a lot of experience. Uh, they brought in Rafael Alves from Fort Lauderdale. Uh, he was one of their star center backs. They brought in Mike Randolph at right back, or sorry, at left back, and he was the captain of the Silverbacks last year. Um, so they brought in quite a quite a good set of players in the defense to help push the team forward this year. Do you think there's anything still missing? Do you think, or or and do you know if there's anything coming up soon? Um, I think there's an expected third keeper going to be signing soon. They've got a young Canadian who was born and raised in Ottawa, trialing with the club just now. Uh, there's nothing else really happening between now and the beginning of the year. Mark DeSantos, the coach, said if anything comes up, if there's any players that become available that spark his interest, he may make a move. But as it stands right now, I think he's, he's fairly set. As far as uh, me being happy with the team, I think the defense is great. They've got a great keeper. They've got a solid eight players to choose from for the back four. Um, they've added Paolo Jr. and Andrew Wiedemann up front. I think that will add a lot, but I still think they're they're missing that something going forward. But uh, we'll see if Tommy Heineman can produce more than last year. Uh, he was injured for most of the season. We'll see if Paolo Jr. can help out, and we'll see if uh, Oliver Minatel, the Brazilian winger who did well last year, can can live up to his expectations this season. All right. So what's the team been up to this preseason? Are they staying around the area? Are they going anywhere? Um, a couple of the guys have had families, got married, had kids. I know Richie Ryan, the captain, went back to Ireland with his kid, um, where he's from. He spent some time in Scotland. Some of the guys have spent time in the city. Uh, Carl Howarth, Nicky Patterson, um, 
Tommy Heineman and Mason Trafford have all started a, a pro futsal training camp that they have and they go around different gyms and they have the youth come in and teach them how to play indoor soccer. So they've been keeping busy that way. Um, some of the guys, the newer signings just arrived in the city recently, but guys like Paolo Jr. who's new to the team has been, uh, he's been at the gym training at TD Place for well over a month now getting ready for the season. So is the team all officially back together in preseason yet or is that yet to come? Yeah, last week <clears throat> they officially met for their first team meeting. Um, they had a sit down with Mark DeSantos, uh, talked about the expectations for the year, and then they hit the gyms for about a week. Now they're in Gatineau, just across just across the water in Quebec, training at an indoor soccer facility. Um, they'll have a, a friendly there against the Rochester Rhinos. Um, they'll be playing against Toronto FC2, the academy team in Toronto, next Friday, and they'll be doing a, uh, playing the Montreal Impact Reserve Team in Montreal the following Friday. So they're getting some good competition. Um, but it's, uh, I'm just looking forward to them playing Carolina on the first game of the season. So speaking of which, actually, so where do you see Ottawa going this year? Where are your expectations at? Um, I think if they can live up, if every player can live up to what's suspected of them, I think they can push for a playoff position. I think it'll be tough with the Cosmos, uh, the Rowdies, you guys, United, um, and the Scorpions all pushing hard this year. I think it'll be hard for the Fury. I think realistically, they're probably a, a five to seven team in the standings. I think if uh, if they do better than last year and continue to grow, they'll be around fifth or sixth spot, but I, I hope that they can push for a playoff position this year. Who is your personal pick for NASL Soccer Bowl champion this year, do you think? <laughs> uh, don't don't, don't pander to us, okay? Don't pander to us. I'm serious. I'm going to say Ottawa Fury. I think <laughs> they're going to sneak in fourth and get all the way through. All right. Well, I mean, the strikers, man, like they were nowhere last year, and then they came in and stole the show almost, so... Mm. Could happen. It could totally happen. No, that's fine. I, uh, yeah, I think Ottawa Fury, if they can sneak into a playoff position, I think they got the heart and the character to push through to, uh, to the final. Terrific. Well, we're getting to the end here, so why don't you again tell the folks watching where to find your content, and then we'll say goodbye. Cool. So you can find me on Twitter at Fury Fanatic. You can find me on my blog at wordpress.furyfanatic.com. And you can find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash furyfanatic. And I also write for Red Nation Online, which can be found on Twitter at RNO and at rednationonline.ca. Terrific. Stuart, thank you so much for joining us. Do appreciate it. Hope you'll come back soon. No problem. I appreciate it, guys. Thank and you. I love what you guys are doing with the podcast. Keep up all the great work. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Hi, I'm Christian. I'm Miguel. And you're watching the Tonight Thing. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the fury, the fire up north. I just made that up. You guys can use it. <laughs> but um, now we're going to take you back to Minnesota United. So a couple weeks ago, we went up to Minnesota United practice and got to watch them kick the ball around a little bit. We showed you a few of those interviews last week. Well, the interviews that we're going to show you today, we went and talked to them a little bit more about what some of the players have been up to in their off season and a little bit more about what they're doing right now. They're down in Arizona at the time of this episode, and they're going to Brazil a little bit later. So I wanted to find out some history behind that and what they're looking forward to. So we're going to take you to Brent Coleman first, and we got Pablo batting second, and Manny's our cleanup man. Man, thank you so much for joining us on Two United Fans. Really do appreciate it. How's the off-season been for you? Uh, a little slow up little here slow. In, the, in the winter, yeah. Um, don't have that many people to train with up here, so just kind of staying busy with coaching and ice fishing. You know, I'm just seeing you now, like going door to door, like, hey, can, can we train together right now? Like, are you, is anyone free over here? Yeah, even when uh, sometimes I jump into sessions with my 14-year-old boys, so I can get some some touches in. You know, because I just miss playing so much. But that's cool. So you, you've done some ice fishing. Do you, are you one of those guys who plays FIFA in the off season? Um, not as much as a lot of the guys, but that's that's what the preseason's for. We have some downtime in between sessions, so. I go over and play some, uh, FIFA with some of the guys. PlayStation or Xbox? Xbox. Yeah. I like that. I'm an Xbox guy too. Yeah. Uh, so, but now, what's the goal for this year for you personally? For me personally? Um, you know, I want to try to get better every week and 
help make the guys around me better, I guess. And uh, personally, I want to make it as hard as I can on the coaches to keep me off the field. You know, if I'm trying, if I'm knocking at the door to get on the field every week, that means I'm doing my job. So that's kind of my approach this season. Is there an aspect of your game that you particularly want to work on or improve? Um, as a center back, I guess communicating with the guys in front of me and keeping it organized, especially when we're more of a possession-oriented team. So when we're on the attack, making sure everything's set so we don't get countered and stuff like that. Just keeping, trying to help keep the pieces in the right spots. So. Are you excited to head off into the, the two trips that you've got planned? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I've actually, I've never, I've never trained or played in Arizona before, and then obviously Brazil. Never been down to South America ever. So like England was my first time going across the pond, and now I get to go to South America. It's gonna be awesome. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. Were you gonna see photographs of you like doing the samba parade that they have uh, in Rio? Like, uh, maybe you know. Maybe the Brazilian guys can show me a couple dances or something. I can join in with the locals, but um, we're all talking about getting some uh, the swimsuits the Brazilians wear, you know, the little Brazilians. So I think a bunch of us are going to try to get some of those before we head down there. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah. us. Appreciate it. Okay, all the best for this year. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Pablo, for joining us on Two United Fans. We're out here checking out this uh, it's your second practice of the year with uh, United. How's it, how's it feeling? Oh, no, thank you, man. Uh, actually, a very good idea you guys had, and I'm, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. It's, uh, the preseason has been pretty good. I'm feeling pretty well. Pretty well. I think we're going to have a good year, and um, a couple of guys are coming, the new guys. You guys are going to see in, uh, in the future, I think, what we have here and what we built. It's, uh, it's everything, it's something special. And I think the, the fans are gonna be very excited for, for, uh, for the season. And if you really like the soccer last year, I think we, we had a lot of improvement. And you know, every year we, and every time we play together, I think we get better and better. So uh, I'm excited for, for the fans, I'm excited for the season, I'm excited for everything that we're building, building here. Cool, yeah, we're all excited too. I think we can't wait for the season to get started. But before the season starts, you're headed down to Brazil, back to your home. How excited are you that the team decided to go to Brazil? Oh, for me, it's awesome, man. Uh, because I know there are some of the players and the coaching staff, and I think the fans and the owners, they, they know us here in the United States, you know, the, a little bit of the Brazilian culture. But I think going there is way different. You know, you feel it and, you know, you, you're going to see it. And we talk about the food, we talk about the way, the style that we play um, f from South America, the, the way we play, the way we talk, the way we dress. I think when you see it and you kind of understand the person, the traditions and the, the culture, it's going to be a very good and it's going to be up, going to be bounding because uh, I think the, the, the players are going to understand us more. And I think we're going to, we definitely, we are here in their culture, so we understand them. So now it's going to be a trade, and I think they're going to see it with their own eyes to see like how how we are and how we play, uh, how we, it's our our country, you know. So it's, I think it's going to be a very very good experience in that matter to people understand the way we are as as a person and as a culture, you know. That's cool. What are some specific things about the culture and the food that you're excited to show some of the teammates who haven't been to Brazil? Well, I always talk about the fruit here, you know, the fruit's very different in Brazil, the taste, uh, the vegetable too, and the way we cook, some of the seasonings, I think uh, they're going to see how different we, we, we cook, you know, how we make the rice, how we make the, the beans, it's totally different than the, the way the style that we make here or the, from Mexico, that's a lot of Mexican tradition here, that a lot of restaurants, so we, we kind of like cook differently. So. We kind of like gonna prove what we have been telling them, you know. So uh, excited to show the, the rice, the beans, the fruit, um, some of the, the seafood is very good there too. The way we cook. So it's a lot, a lot of things to to show. I think I'm gonna have time with the 12 days that we're gonna be there. I think it's gonna be. I, I'm just afraid that they like it so much that they're gonna stay there. So it's <laughs> not, we're not gonna have a team this year. <laughs> All the fans left go down to Brazil to watch the team now. <laughs> yes, yeah, hey guys. Not, yeah, guys, you, you need to see us play, but down here in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, we won't take any more of your time. So it looks like you're ready to go from practice today. And uh, I want to thank you for taking time to stop by and talk to us. 
No, thank you. I appreciate it. Very good show. And any anytime you, you want to invite me, I'll be right there. Cool. Thanks, Pablo. Thank you. Well, Manny, thanks so much for joining us here at Two United Fans. Really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, the question I had for you, so now you just started preseason. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, I think the fans for us, we know that there's a game day on April and now you're in preseason. What's the goal between now and then? What are the blocks that you work on? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, obviously there's a process for us to get ready for uh for the season, and, and again, there's a, there's a fitness aspect to it, there's a tactical aspect to it, there's a technical aspect to it. So we have to make sure we're prepared from day one to, to battle a very competitive season. So again, we're at the first week now, which is uh, you know has some soccer and fitness component to it. And then once we start to travel, uh, you throw in the game side of that. And, and then there's the other side of, of the team getting to know each other, getting to know the new players, uh, and certainly uh, you know, we have to get better from last year. So we have to. Think of ways how we can use these two months to not only uh, get ready for the first game, but also embrace the things that the core did well last year and then get these new guys who are coming in excited to be a part of the group and to make us better. So now, where does the, the preseason trips that you're going to take to Arizona and to Brazil fit into that picture? What do they help you achieve? You know, it's a, a long question, so I'll give you a long answer. So obviously this first week we're here in Minnesota, and you can kind of look at it like in 10-day cycles. So we'll be here for about 10 days to kind of, uh, you know, just just – build into things properly, particularly in the fitness side of things. So a lot of the focus isn't on crazy fitness, but it's on fitness to build ourselves up for this trip, first trip in Arizona. And while you're in Arizona, we'll, we'll play three games in 10 days. Uh, so the fitness will still be part of the component, but now we'll really put in uh, some soccer specific ideas for the guys, which are gonna be game related, particularly when we play our games, but also when we're doing our wake, work away from the games, uh, building relationships between players in the fields, and then now really starting to get more in the technical side of the game, while we still are, are just in the beginning stages of the tactical side. Gotcha. And when you're you know, playing in a different place, far from home, far from your facilities, is there a difference to um, the kinds of activities that you do? Or is it the same kind of schedule that you keep? No, it, it, it's different just because it wouldn't matter if we were here. There would be a different type of cycle that we'd have because it depends on how far out we from the, the from our first game of the season, frankly. So, so everything's kind of laid out to that being we're ready to go from day one of our season. But ultimately, you know, we play in a, cl a climate here that we need to get out. Uh, we need to get on grass. We need to be outside. We need to find places where we an environment where we can really get the work done that we need to prepare. Um, and then we also, as much as I love Minnesota, we are kind of in an island in terms of the level of players, I'm sorry, level of other teams to play. So we have to, at some point, like I said, as we start to put the soccer aspect into this, we have to find uh, teams that will kind of help us prepare the right way. So, um, and last but not least, uh, you know, this job is, is pretty serious when you're in it in terms of the players have to really focus on, on applying their trade and then to get away, uh, to not be distracted and, and, and you know, a way where we all have other things we have to do in our lives outside of soccer. And when we go to these places, you know, the focus is really in the moments that are, are important. We're really making sure we're thinking about the, the game itself to prepare for the season. One last question, which is this year you've had a strong core of players return, which is um, I've heard, heard it's a little bit different than previous times that, that we've gone into the preseason. Is there a difference now in the way that you handle things because you have the strong core returning? Yeah, I, I think we, we still handle things similarly. I, I think one of the nice things, though, is maybe as a coach, you, you know your players a little bit quicker, a little bit more about what their good things they do well and the things that we need to work on. So no doubt about it, I, I think um, on two levels. It's exciting to have a strong core back because we feel like we, we've got great players who add a lot to the club. Um, we've added some great pieces that we think are going to get better. And then I, I think it's a great message to our Minnesota fans about the vision that our ownership group is trying to put together in terms of really thinking about not just this year, which is so important, obviously, that we want, we're here to win trophies. We want to win championship and trophies. And we didn't do that as much as we wanted to last year. So that's the first and foremost, the goal. And the guys we bring brought back, we think are going to give us that opportunity. At the same time, uh, you know, we have an ownership group that's given us the opportunity to bring these core guys that we feel are going to be important for the next couple of years. So it's just a great time for Minnesota soccer because we, we've got uh, great players, a uh, great group of guys, and ultimately we've got an ownership group that wants to give us the resources to have a great preseason and then have a great core for years to come. Uh, but the reality is all those guys have to get better. There's a lot of teams in our league now that have prepared and, and signed players and are trying to get better as well. So it's really important for us that we, we take and embrace the positives of what's going on in this club. But we got to get this work done in preseason to make sure uh, we handle the adversity of the year. Awesome. Thank you so much. I right. really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you.
All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching another episode, guys. We hope you enjoy the interview and with um, McTaggart before. You're on about. the wrong side of the law, McTaggart. That's never going to get old. We hope you learned a little bit about the Ottawa Fury and some cool things going on up there, as well as got to see inside the preseason again and learned a little bit about their trips to Arizona and Brazil. So stay tuned. We've got more great stuff coming to you. And don't forget to stay up to date with everything we're doing. Subscribe to Twitter. Like us on YouTube. And tweet at us on Facebook. Are we on Friendster yet? If we haven't, we've been doing this wrong the whole time. Oh my god, we're missing out on so many fans. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one, okay?